Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India last lecture uh, we basically discuss about the combustion which is very important because for any propulsive device the energy conversion will be taking place in the uh, combustor itself that is why I call it is the heart of any engine that means combustor is the heart of any engine and we need to understand the processes involved in combustion which is quite complex in nature as I had depicted uh, through a pictures by saying that it involves several other disciplines as well. So, what we will do we will uh, also now look at thermodynamics of combustion which you might have learned, but for the sake of you know uh, what you call repetition or completeness sake and also to help you to recapitulate what you have uh, already learnt and we will now indulge in it. If you look at like combustion always involve chemical reactions, chemical reaction what uh, we will be considering basically a methane that means one mole of methane is reacting with the one mole of oxidizer right and it is going to what like it is going to the water and carbon dioxide and certain amount of heat being released right that is the amount of heat which is being released. Now, question arises is this reaction really balanced number one and why we need to look at really whether it is balanced or not and what is the meaning of a reaction being balanced right is this if you just look at this reaction what I have written down here is it balanced? what is the meaning of balance balance means if I look at in the left hand side that is methane reacting with oxygen right okay. I need to look at whether the elements for example, in methane the elements will be one is carbon other is hydrogen right whether it is you know same as that of whatever is there in the right hand side that either in the carbon dioxide or in the water that is the meaning of balance. In this case it is very clearly being you know you can see that it is not balanced right and you want to balance what you will have to do you will have to basically take elements and balance it right and the balance equation would be one mole of methane is reacting with two moles of oxidizer going to the two moles of water and one moles of carbon dioxide of course, certain amount of heat being released right. This kind of equation you might have been taught from your high school. One question I would like to ask whether this reaction really take place in nature or not can anybody tell me whether it is similarly it is occurring or not it cannot be really you know uh, uh, occurred in nature we will see little later on when we are talking about chemical kinetics right. So, what is the meaning of this reaction what we are saying this reaction is balanced that is one mole of methane is reacting two moles of oxidizer and going to the product as two moles of water and one mole of carbon dioxide. That means, what you are saying you are saying that in the left hand side there are three moles of are there and the right hand side this is three moles can I call it as a balance that means, in other words if the number of moles you know of the participating uh, species is same as that of the right hand side can I call it as a balance 
yes or no but in this case it is looks to be like that which is right actually if you look at i mean we will be looking at whether you know the moles is balanced number of moles in the left hand side of the various participating species and the product number of moles or we will have to look at mass. So, let us consider that what happens to the mass, mass if you look at the 16 grams of methane is reacting with 64 grams of oxygen it is going to the product 36 grams of water and 44 grams of carbon dioxide. What it indicates in the left hand side it is how many grams? It is something 80 grams on the left hand side. If you look at this is something 80 grams and this side is also 80 grams, right. That means, what is indicates? It indicates that mass is conserved, right. That means, the mass, no mass is created or destroyed in a chemical reaction only the change in their forms take place, right. In other words, mass is conserved, right. Is it really true? Because it says, I mean we have, we have done that, that means it definitely it will be true, but is it not that contradicting the your, uh, you know what Einstein told energy can be converted into the mass and mass can be converted converted into energy, but here there is a amount of heat energy is there. So, naturally this is violating am I right, that means this is not right or the what Einstein had told is not right, can anybody tell me how come it is not you know satisfying the concept or the given by the Nobel laureate Einstein, what might be the reason. Yes, that means in this case the mass change will be negligibly small, right, such that you cannot really measure, right. And if you want to look at that, some example is given in my thermodynamics book, you can look at it, right. Because the amount of heat release is very, very small to have any tangible change in the mass, right. So, therefore, both are valid and generally we use air as an oxidizer most of the combustions. Of course, in recent times there are some combustions people are talking about you know to avoid NOx and other things that you know oxygen combustion kind of thing. But however, we will be using mostly the air as an oxidizer. So, uh, if you look at this reaction can be written as the one mole of methane is reacting with the two moles of air and keep in mind that we are considering only the air means nitrogen and oxygen others are negligible. And it is going to the carbon dioxide one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of the water and large amount of 7.52 moles of nitrogen right. So, what I would like to suggest that although we have seen in this equation and uh, also in this equation that number of moles in the left hand side of the participating species is equal to the number of moles of the product in case of methane, but it need not to be true for other hydrocarbon it is just a coincidence right. That means, if a equation is balanced need not to be that. Uh, one can assume that the number of moles in the left hand side is same as the number of moles in the product right that you should keep in mind. So, uh, now question arises what is stoichiometry because we have talked about balance equation right that means it will be related to the balance equation. What is the meaning of that? That meaning is that the ratio of the oxidizer to fuel which is sufficient to burn certain amount of fuel leading to the complete formation of products of combustion. That means, if I am taking like one mole of 
the methane, it is reacting with the two moles of oxidizer, right. That means, it will be going to the product that is what carbon dioxide and water, right. For example, if I take a C x H y, if you look at this is the generic name, you know, generic uh, formula for a hydrocarbon. That means, if I take x is equal to 1 and y will be what 4, then it becomes C H 4, right. If I take x is equal to 2 and h is 6, that will be ethane, right. Methane like x is 3 and h is 8, that will become propane. So, if I react, I mean if I take a mole of you know generic hydrocarbons and reacting with a moles of air right and it is going to the x moles of carbon dioxide and y by 2 moles of water and 3.76 a into a of course nitrogen right this is generic i have written that means if you look at the fuel oxidizer ratio which will give the product like that means, complete conversion of fuel into their respective product like in case of hydrocarbon, all the carbon in the uh, in a fuel will be converted into carbon dioxide and all the water will be, all the hydrogen will be converted into water, right. Of course, oxygen will be there. Then we call it as a, you know, complete combustion product. There might be cases where the product will be containing excess oxygen it might be containing certain amount of carbon monoxide, right. Can you call it as a complete, you know reaction is complete? Certainly no, right. So, that means, what is the ratio of oxidizer to fuel or in other words fuel to oxidizer, which is sufficient to burn a 1 kg of fuel leading to the formation of the complete products of combustion, we call it as a stoichiometric. So, in this valence equation, where A is equal to x plus y by 4, right. Of course, if I take a methane, what will happen to the A? If I take x as 1 and y is basically 4, that becomes A becomes for methane, this 4, A will be what you call 1 plus what you call uh, 4 by 4 is equal to 2. We have seen in the last you know slide that A turns out to be 2 for a methane. So, air by fuel stoichiometric what do we call mass of oxidizer divided by mass of fuel and with happens to be 4.76 A molecular weight of air. This is molecular weight right M w of air and similarly m w fuel is the molecular weight of fuel. And for methane air mixture, the A by fuel stoichiometry happens to be 17.11, whereas for others hydrocarbons it will be around 15, do not think that it will be exactly 15, in some cases it will be 14.9 or in some cases it may be 15.2, right. Most of the hydrocarbons will be around 15 except methane. Therefore, this number is a ball pack number what we keep in mind, but exceptional case is methane, right. Now, when you talk about this air fuel ratio, it is basically non dimensional number, right. Kg of fuel by kg of oxidizer, if it is fuel to air, if it is other way around, this will be kg of kg of, of oxidizer divided by kg of fuel, right, if it is air fuel ratio. Now, but sometimes we need to know how far this air fuel ratio from the stoichiometric. In real situation, you need not to really operate at stoichiometric, rather we always try to operate at the lean condition, so that enough oxygen will be there, so that complete combustion can take place. Ideally, 
at stoichiometric all the fuel will be converted into the their respective product, but in real situation it would not occur right. And sometimes we need to also go for a you know uh, less amount of uh, air or the oxidizer as compared to the stoichiometric requirement right, particularly when we will be trying to get some pyrolysis product right or a gasify. For example, I want to gasify a fuel solid fuel or some liquid fuel the naturally I will have to use less amount of oxidizer. You know like we do that like we will be starving, starving in the sense suppose somebody ask me a question I do not give the answer I will just give the hint. So, that he will think and get the answer, so that he will develop his mind instead of just remembering listening to my answer and remember it. That is the way we should teach not that give the answer right. So, similarly if I want to convert certain fuel liquid fuel into a certain gaseous fuel or a product better one I need to be throttling choking, but in a controlled manner right is very important like. <coughs> generally people always happy whoever will give answer, but I say that those teachers who give answer to the student directly they spoil the students. So, the similarly in this way like you need to have a lower air fuel ratio or depending on situation you know to have a conversion product. So, now we need to define how far this air fuel ratio is differing from the stoichiometric right, because stoichiometric is the ideal or the theoretical air fuel ratio which is required for complete combustion. So, therefore, I need to define an equivalence ratio that is basically a uh, ratio of air by fuel stoichiometry divided by air by fuel. In other words fuel by air divided by fuel by air stoichiometry. It can be lean mixtures, it can be rich mixtures. If I say phi is less than 1, I call it as a lean mixture. What kind of lean it is? It will be fuel lean. If phi is equal to 1 that is stoichiometric right, phi is equal to 1 stoichiometric mixture. If phi is greater than 1 that is what you call fuel rich mixture, which we will be using it. So, you should keep in mind if phi is greater than 1 what is the meaning and phi is equal to 1 is basically stoichiometric. And beside this sometimes we will be using that what is the percentage of stoichiometric air that is 100 percent divided by phi will give me whether it is higher amount of oxidizer or higher amount uh, or less amount of oxidizer as compared to stoichiometric right. Is this clear what I am talking about right fuel lean fuel rich and stoichiometric like depending upon whether phi is less than 1 or phi is greater than 1. So, now we will take an example right that is the gasoline what is being modeled as a octane C 8 H 18 is burned with dry air. Keep in mind that gasoline is what? What do we use as a petrol right in our petrol engines and the volumetric analysis of the product and dry basis right one can obtain C O 2 10 0.02 percent oxygen is 5.6 percent and carbon dioxide is 0.88 percent nitrogen is 83.48 percent, but how we will get this thing right. You need to measure these values by using gas analyzers earlier days or set apparatus being used right you might be aware or set apparatus by chemical means wet chemicals right means and nowadays of course, very good sensors are available you can measure it. And suppose these are given now we need to determine from this product what will what is this air fuel ratio and equivalence ratio and percentage of stoichiometric air being used right. Let us look at how we will go about it. What we will do we will have to basically look at a uh, what you call equation what we started with that is x moles of the octane is reacting a moles of air 
and these are the product like carbon dioxide which is given, CO and oxygen is given and nitrogen is given, but water is not given or water will definitely come, am I right? Because it is a hydrocarbon, hydrogen is there, so product must be having hydrogen. So, that is amount is not given, we will say let it be B, right. Then what I will do? I will have to basically balance. Can I just look at do it? Of course, some of you can do it, if you are having good concentration and you know mind power. You can do that, but you may sometimes make some mistake. So, therefore, we need to do in a very systematic manner. The one which I am going to illustrate is basically will be doing a mass balance, right. That means, what I will do? I will look at each element. For example, nitrogen is here, right. I will look at nitrogen 3.76 into 2, because you know n 2 and a is the coefficient. Right, I can say on the left hand side, right hand side will be what? Right line will be 83.48 into 2. So, if I just take this balance A happens to be you know A is equal to 22.2. And similarly, for carbon if you look at we are having 8 you know 8 x in the left hand side is equal 10.02 plus because CO2 and for carbon monoxide it is 0.88. I can get x is equal to 1.36, you know. And similarly, for hydrogen in the left hand side is 18 x, of course, uh, in this place is not there and water will be there, that is 2 h, 2 b, right. This will be 2 b from the water. So, b will be 12.24, if you get that. And oxygen you can look at, because oxygen is there 2 a and then in this case from the carbon dioxide it will be 10.02 into 2 plus 0 0.88 from the carbon monoxide and of course, from extra oxygen is there here. Here it is not a stoichiometric mixture, right, because carbon monoxide is there and also the extra oxygen is there. So, that will be uh, 2 into 5.6 plus B, of course, in water there is a B moles will be there, right. So, then after that you will of course, uh, get some values that is B 12 point uh, you know 2 4 and then you know you have already know these things and you can cross check like whether the left hand side is same as that of the right hand side for the O. If it is then you can say it is basically it is just to cross check you may avoid it in, you know sometimes, but you know how we will cross check it that is given here. So, if you cross check that and then you know sure that it is uh, you know well balanced, the above balance equation will be like this that is 1.36 we have already seen x and of course, 22.2 that is our a and then you know like uh, b is 22.24. That means, I can rewrite this you know equation in terms of 1 mole, what I have done, I have just divided you know uh, by 1.36 and all those things I have divided by 1.36, right. And then I have written down like this. So, then air fuel ratio by mass becomes what? From the actual, because this is actual, this is not stoichiometric. So, that will be mass of air divided mass of fuel, you will find that it is something 20.19, because all those things we are doing, right. Okay, all values we know, we can just put it, because this is the air, right. If you look at this is air and this is nothing but fuel. So, I will get 20.19. Now, I need to, because uh, air fuel ratio A we have found out, right. We need to find out equivalence ratio. For that, what we will have to do? We need to know what is the stoichiometric air by fuel. Like stoichiometric air fuel can be found out considering a balance equation that is C 8 H 8 12.5 O 2 plus 3.72. It is going to product carbon dioxide, water and of course, 47 nitrogen, right. You keep in mind that there is no carbon dioxide in the product, there is no extra oxygen in the product. That means, all is converted into carbon dioxide all the fuel is converted to carbon dioxide and of course, the water. So, this is our stoichiometric reaction. 
So, the stoichiometric fuel A ratio if you look at m a by m a and this is nothing but your fuel, fuel and this is your A and you will get 0 0.06643. Keep in mind that do not you know remove the decimal point because it will incur some error right. So, and if you look at what is this air fuel by stoichiometric just to have a feel it happens to be 15.05. As I told you it will be around 15 right. Sometimes in the exam or somewhere you have land in some other number please check whether it is around 15 or not right. That is the except methane <coughs> air or methane oxide. So, the equivalence ratio becomes what is that A by fuel stoichiometry divided by A by fuel and you will find that it amounts to be 0 0.745. What is this whether it is a fuel in or fuel rich here phi is less than 1. So, therefore, it is fuel lean mixture right. If it is phi is greater than 1, then it is fuel rich mixture. It is because less amount of what you call fuel as compared to the stoichiometric oxidizer requirement right. So, therefore, it is a fuel lean mixture and hence. Uh, so, let us calculate the percentage of stoichiometric that is 100 divided by 5 that happens to be 134.2 percentage. So, now if you look at like in the combustion we have seen that we will be dealing with various mixtures of gases right. That means, we have seen that carbon dioxide, water, hydro uh, me, uh, uh, what you call fuel hydrocarbons, oxygen, carbon monoxide lot of gases will be there right both on the reactant and the product sometimes the mixtures. Now, how we will deal with whether we can consider this to be ideal gas or not and if we will consider it is the ideal gas how to handle if it is real how we will handle the mixture of gases right that is a very important concept which you must be knowing all those things what I am going to talk about it right, because we need to handle this mixture of gases. So, question arises what are the methods to be used to specify composition of the mixture right. What are the ways? There are two ways of specifying a mixture composition right. One is the based on mass that is mass analysis as it is molar analysis or number of moles right. So, mass analysis of a mixture of gases one can think of you know as uh, like uh, let us consider a container which contains certain amount of gases for example, carbon dioxide, methane, oxygen and other things or let us consider a container which will be containing a uh, what to call uh, certain kg a kg of, of a gas a and then maybe another gas b and c like that right. So, I can write find out the total mass of the mixture is equal to some of the masses of the constituent gases which can be expressed as that m m is equal to m a plus m b plus m c and there are n number of gases. So, I can write down m m m n and I can you know come write this in a compact form that is summation of m i where i is equal to 1 to n it can be anything. For example, if it contains carbon dioxide, water and carbon monoxide and nitrogen 4 gases here it will be i is equal to 1 to 4. And if I divide this equation by mass of mixture similarly here right mass of mixture what will happen this will equal to 1 and m a by m mixture right we can write down as m a 1 is equal to m a by m m 
plus m b by m m plus m c by m m up to the m n by m i. And I can write down that is in a compact form m i divided by m m. And what is this term? This is nothing but your mass fraction, right. So, I can write down mass fraction of i th spaces, right, is equal to, I mean we can use a symbol x i is equal to m i divided by m m. Now, if I use this symbol and write down in this expression, what I will get is 1 is equal to x a plus x b plus x c up to the x n summation of x i. What it is saying? That mass fraction of all the participating spaces or all the spaces in a mixture is equal to 1. This is a very important concept which you will be using you know several times and this you should keep in mind. So, similarly we will be looking at mole also like let us consider the a container which contains certain amount of a mixtures gases and let us say N A moles, N A B, N B moles and N C moles like that. Then we can look at that total number of moles in the mixture that is N m is equal to sum of number of moles of each constituent of the mixture that can be expressed mathematically as N m is equal to N a plus N b plus N c summation up to the N n and I can write down summation of N i right, where i is equal to 1 to n. If I divide this by n m by n m here and similar way I can write down this expression as you know 1 n a divided by n m n b by n m up to the n n by n m. And keep in mind that this can be written that summation of n i by n m and if I can define this as a mole fraction of i th mixture is equal to y i is nothing but n i by n m. So, we can write down that in a similar expression that is y a plus y b plus y c uh, dot dot I mean like till y n and summation of y. What is indicate that mole fraction of a mixture sum of mole fraction of all the constituents in a mixture is equal to 1. <coughs> But the mass m i can be related to mole right, of course, with the help of molecular weight m w i and because we know that m i is equal to n i m w i, i is the i th species right. It can be uh, carbon monoxide, it can be oxygen, it can be any other species, i means any species. Okay. So, then I can write down m m is summation of m i and is equal to, because I will just use in this expression n a m w a plus n b m w b and till n th and m w m. In a compact form I can write n i m w i, if you look at i is equal to 1 to n right. And if I uh, divide this by the n m like you know this expression n m. Similarly, you know all this expression by n m if you look at I can write down in this way that is summation of n i m w i n m and what is this term? This term by definition it is y i. So, I can write down and what is this term? This term is basically the m w m that is molecular weight of the mixture is basically sum of the product of mole fraction of gases like A into molecular weight of gas A that means respective molecular weight and sum over that will give me the molecular weight of the mixture. This is very important you know. Uh, st uh, statements which you should keep in mind. Suppose there are several gases, individual molecular weight I know, then I need to 
use this small fraction to find out what will be the total molecular weight of the mixture or the right. So, but x i we know by definition m i by m m and we know that m i is nothing but your uh, n i and uh, you know m w i I can write down and this is nothing but your y i. So, I can write down that x i is equal to y i m w i divided by m w m. That means, if I know the mole fraction, I can find out mass fraction provided I know the molecular weight of particular species and also the molecular weight of the mixture. That means, this can be related to one another following expression. This is a very important you know expression you should keep in mind. Right. So, now we need to look at behavior of uh, ideal gas, whether we can consider ideal gas or we need to consider this combustion you know products and then mixtures you know kind of things as a real gas. Is it possible we can assume to be ideal gas? Most of the case times we use ideal gas, why? Because the temperature will be very high. Of course, the pressure also in case of rocket engine particularly will be high. So, as the temperature is quite high and pressure also is you know equally high, we can consider not really incurring too much of an error particularly in rocket engines for the simplicity, but other cases you can happily use ideal gas mixture. Right. Now, question arises if I take this air right, and what will be the pressure and at which we can consider the gas as an ideal. If I take a pressure air simply, let us take air, what will be the pressure at which you know we can consider to be gas as a non ideal, right? Or I cannot apply, do you know this thing? For that, you need to you know uh, recall or the relearn about the compressibility chart, right. I just give you the hints that around 100 atmosphere pressure at ambient temperature, I can happily consider it to be ideal gas without really incurring too much of error, right. So, 100 atmosphere pressure is a quite a you know bit, right. Most of the your high gas turbine engines, we do not go to that high pressure, right. And temperature is high, therefore, we can happily use you know for combustion processes ideal gas and use it. So, therefore, we need to know that and for ideal gas we know P v is equal to n R u t, you know R u is the universal gas constant and can you use ideal gas law when two or more ideal gas are mixed. This is a very important question, because if in the mixture carbon monoxide is there and nitrogen is there right or carbon dioxide is there as well. So, whether each individual can be considered an ideal gas, but can I consider right as an ideal gas right total mixture that is important. So, it can it can be done only when you know that uh, compo each individual composition behave you know as an ideal gas. For example, like air which consists of several ideal gases like oxygen, nitrogen, argon, carbon dioxide right and extra can be treated as an ideal gas provided the composition you know behaves individually as an ideal gas that is very important right. So, then uh, under this condition we can use the mixture to be an ideal gas. And then the mixture can be conveniently analyzed mainly by two models namely one is Dalton model and other is Amagat model. So, uh, the pressure of an ideal gas mixture is equal to sum of the pressure, its individual components would exert if each existed alone at the same volume and temperature of the mixture. This is nothing but your Dalton's law of additive pressure, which you have learnt you know from the school days as well. Let us look at pictorial I have shown here what is saying the air, air contains nitrogen, oxygen and argon it is having the same volume and same temperature T a right. 
but whereas the pressure will be different and these pressures of individual gases you know exerted if you know each alone at the same volume and the same temperature of the mixture then we call it as a partial pressure right so if you look at if i take this pressure mixture by using ideal gas law, you know N m R u T m divided by V m, you know all this symbol, V is the volume, T is the temperature, N is the number of moles of the mixture. Then I can write down, we, have, we know that N m is equal to N a plus N b plus up to the N n. Then I can regroup this and write down N a R u T m divided by V m and this is and similarly N b R u T m by V m and all those things, if you look at this is nothing but what? that is P A. Similarly, this will be P B, right. That is the partial pressure of that. I can write out P A total pressure experienced by the mixture will be sum of the partial pressure, right. And for this example, what I have taken air, it will be P A, the partial pressure of nitrogen plus partial pressure of oxygen and argon, right. That is basically Dalton's law of additive pressure what we will be considering. And now, let us uh, move at what is the limitation of this Dalton law of partial pressure you know. So, if you look at Dalton law assume that molecules of individual component are not influenced by the pressure of other components of the mixture right. This is an assumption. So, therefore, in real situation this assumption may not be true, because uh, right and uh, other one is the Dalton's law is valid only for an ideal gas mixture. Of course, you can apply this for a real gas uh, with a moderate errors within certain pressure and temperature right range, because if it is a very high pressure and low temperature then actually this would not be valid. And we would not be getting into that regime and uh, this is due to the fact that there will be significant intermolecular forces in the real gases at high pressure and low temperature what is which are being neglected you know in case of an ideal gas uh, you know hypothesis. So, and we need to look at uh, this Emma Gertz law of additive volumes we state that that volume of an ideal gas mixture is equal to the sum of volume of each individual component gas that would occupy if each gas existed alone at the mixture temperature and pressure. In case of your Dalton's law of partial pressure what we are considering? We are considering the temperature and volume to be same for the both mixture and each component. In this case the temperature and pressure to be same that means volume will be changing. For example, if I consider the air total volume of the air which will be remaining same at the mixture temperature and same as the pressure will be equal to the volume of the nitrogen gas and oxygen gas and argon gas. At the same temperature mixture temperature and pressure keep in mind that is very important one. So, if you look at mathematically what is that V m is equal to again using ideal gas law that is N m R u T m by P m and N m in place of that I can write down N a plus N b plus up to the N n right. And if I take separate out if you look at this is nothing but your V uh, what you call A right. Similarly, this will be V b like that it goes on right V. Uh, n. So, we can write down that V m of the mixture will be summation of individual mixture of the gases you know like or volume occupied by each gases in the mixture. So, if you look at V a is basically summation of the uh, what you call V i where three gases are there nitrogen, oxygen and argon of the volume. These things will be using basically to look at uh, various you know, other properties like enthalpy, entropy and you know other internal energy kind of things. So, let us look at uh, the relate these things and if you look at the volume V a by V m, if I look at in place of V a using ideal gas law I can write down 
n a r u t m divided by p m and v m I can write down like that, if this will be cancelling out, if you look at this will cancel in what is that n a by n m is nothing but your mole fraction of the species a right. And similarly, we can uh, look at partial pressure p a by p m and if I look at that, we can write down p a as n a r u t m divided by v m into v m divided by n m r u t m. So, this will cancel it out, what is that? This will cancel it out here, similarly it will cancel it, you will get n a by n m, which is nothing but your mole fraction of a and which is equal to v a by v m, right. What it indicates? It indicates that the pressure ratio right or pressure fraction is equal to the mole fraction is equal to the volume fraction of course, only for an ideal gas. This is a very important concept which you must keep in mind. Now, mix for mixture of three ideal gas nam namely A, B, C we can write down M M is equal to M B plus M M A plus M B plus M C. Similarly, N M in, in terms of number of moles N M is equal to N A plus N B plus N C. And I can write down basically P M is equal to P A plus P B plus P C. This is from the Dalton's law of partial pressure. <coughs> so, uh, from the Amagat's law I can write down V M is equal to V A plus V B plus V C right, I can use that. And we can write down this uh, internal energy U m is basically U a plus U b plus U c and summation of that in the three spaces. And if I look at the specific you know internal energy, it can be either for the you know like uh, U m is summation of y i e y and i of course, a function of this right. And similarly, I can write down for enthalpy, which is summation of mole fraction and h i. Right. That means, using this concept, I can estimate what will be the entropy of the mixtures and also the specific entropy in terms of mole fraction of the i s species or it can be summation over 1 to n. Three for 3 phases, you can write down a, b, c like that. And now, let us look at about enthalpy, because we will be dealing with enthalpy right. Let us look at enthalpies kind of thing. So, specific enthalpy of the mixture is given a H A mixture, I am just writing to specify X i H i cap. Keep in mind that this is enthalpy per kg of fuel, that, that means enthalpy is a kilo joule per kg, this unit will be kilo joule per kg with a cap and without cap that is kilo joule per kilo mole kind of thing. Similarly, and for this case you will have to use the mass fraction and H mixture you will use the mole fraction and H i, where this enthalpy of a species can be expressed as you know H i t is equal to H f with respect to the standard that is 298.15 and the atmospheric pressure that is 0 plus C p i d t, what do you call this term? This term is nothing but your heat of formation right, h f i this is nothing heat of formation and C p i d t which will be integrated 298.15 to the particular temperature will be basically sensible enthalpy right. So, this heat of formation you can get from a tables of course, it has been made from using the concept of uh, reactions, so which I won't be getting into, but we can look at like uh, how to calculate this heat of reaction and formations, right? And we let us consider that one mole of methane is reacting with two moles of oxygen, going to the product uh, CO2 and water at 25 degree Celsius and 0.1 mega Pascal. Keep in mind that this is also there. That means both the reactant and product are at the same temperature, although the sum heat being will be released in that, that is the assumptions. So, if I use this and also make some assumption that 
steady flow process. Keep in mind this is the process and this is your C V and steady flow process, no sap to work like change in kinetic energy is 0, change in potential energy is 0 and there is no sap to work and you will find that Q is nothing but your H P minus H R and where H P is summation of N I P H I P, P is the basically product and I will be any number of species and similarly minus N I R H I R, R is the reactant. And keep in mind that this portion is known as the heat of reaction at standard state. What is the standard state? That is 298.15. This we call is heat of a reaction, right? And this heat of formation, like per unit mole of either the reactant or for any species, you can use for the table. I'll just show you that various tables will be available. You can see that oxygen heat of formation is 0, hydrogen you know will be <coughs> oxygen will be 0 and nitrogen will be 0 and water if you look at gas it is minus 242 kilojoule per mole whereas, for the liquid it is 286 kilojoule per mole. What I was talking about low heating value and the high heating value in the last lecture. Now, similarly, kerosene it can be 51.6 and which is in liquid state right. So, you can use this uh, table to estimate the and what is the meaning of this heat of reaction. Basically, if you look at uh, the reactant will be at here in this zone, this is keep in mind that enthalpy versus temperature is being plotted like at various temperature it is changing, which indicates that the heat of formation will be changing with the temperature as well. Similarly, the product and this difference you know is nothing but your heat of reaction, because you are considering at this point of the standard temperatures. And the variation of heat of reaction and product with temperature you know which I have already told. And although it is being drawn parallel, but in real situation it would not be parallel keep in mind right. It will be different, because the C p is a function of temperature right that you should keep in mind. <coughs> So, let us take an example like one mole of methane is reacted to oxygen is stoichiometric ratio consider the heat of reactants at temperature of 298 Kelvin and pressure of course, this is a standard pressure determine the heat of combustion right. How will determine the heat of combustion? We will have to basically look at heat of the reactions and then you know heat of reaction will be negative because this is the exothermic reaction. So, then we will divide the mass of the fuel kind of thing we will get the heat of reaction. So, stoichiometric reaction is given below that is methane reacting with to oxygen carbon di going to the carbon dioxide and water. So, from this heat of reaction I can get the, I can write down here this I can get from the table right heat of formation and similarly oxygen of course, this will be 0 right. This will be 0 heat of formation of oxygen and if I will substitute these values from the table like for heat of formation for carbon dioxide, for water and then uh, you need to uh, you know use this heat of formation problem whether it is a gas or a liquid that is very important. And similarly, for the me methane you will have put substitute these values when you put this thing you will get minus 803.5 kilo joule keep in mind that. And heat of combustion will be heat of reaction of course, the minus sign of that that became positive divide by mass of fuel. In this case one mole you can put into molecular weight and you will get 50.2 mega joule of heat being generated when you burn 1 kg of fuel. With this I will stop over. <coughs> okay. Do you have any question to be asked any doubt?